Hello there, one and all, and here we go, folks. It's time for a review of this one. You're watching episode 357 of Love at First Ascent with me, Percy Ace. Thank you very much for tuning in. Whether you're watching live or you're watching the recording, please, please do consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already done so, and click on the little bell so that you get notifications of upcoming videos. But I need to see who the first comment uh, is from. It's Polpo who says, hi again, and then Rachel says, ooh, the extra. And of course, Rachel is talking about this the brand new X-ray of Marc-Antoine Barrois' Ganymede. Again, of course, composed by Quentin Biche. We will smell it and talk about it in a moment. What are people saying about it so far? Pradeep says, Quentin, Ma, Akigala, Wood, Biche. Yeah, you're not, you're not wrong there. John says, greetings from, and I'm sorry to use such colourful language on such a show, New Jersey. <laughs> nice surprise seeing you today. Thank you very much. And Rachel says, I'm curious how anyone would want a more powerful version in brackets of this lovely fragrance. Yeah, it's it's a good question actually, isn't it? Pradeep then says, get ready for more new clone companies to be launched just because of this fragrance. You may not be wrong there either. Davlone says, this is for when you want to smell your scent for a week straight. Okay, so those of you who may not be aware what all of these comments are about are probably those of you who have never tried the original Ganymede. Tiny, tiny little bit of context very quickly. Marc-Antoine Barrois is an, an haute, couture, uh, haute couture for men designer from France, based in France. He very kindly gave up some of his time a few months ago to do an interview on this channel, so you should be able to find that quite easily if you search for it. And then in 2016, he branched out into perfumes with the launch of a scent called B683, which is partly a reference to the planet in Le Petit Prince and also partly a reference to... Um, his own date of birth. Um, and it, it apparently it did extremely well. And I'm looking at the dates here. And in 2019, that was followed up by Ganymede, again, composed by Quentin Biche. Then in 2020, we had the extra version of B683, which to, to date is still, I think, my favorite of the now five kind of different scents we have from Marc-Antoine Barrois. In 2022, last year, we had Encelade, uh, which has already done very, very well. Uh, I think it's been nominated for at least two Fragrance Foundation UK awards. And now we have the Ganymede Extra. So, so there are still only three different standalone smells, but five different bottles that you could have from the brand for your collection. And Pradeep is saying Encelade Extra. That may well come maybe in a couple of years. Who knows? Um B683 is really similar to Ganymede, says Spaced Out, just more spicy and ambery. Um, hmm, I wonder if I'd agree with that or not. Maybe save that debate for another time. I've also got little samples of the full range so we can remind ourselves the original um, Ganymede if we need to. Now, Ganymede is, um, I think, well, the, the, the reason why I rate the brand and the reason why I think the brand is very interesting is because of the three scents we've had from them so far, and by that I mean, you know, the sort of three odors, if you like, B683, Ganymede and Encelade, they're all quite bold, they're, they're, they're interesting. Ganymede and Encelade are certainly very, very original. Um, it's for that reason that I put Encelade onto my list of the top 10 perfumes of last year. Even though I personally find them hard work, I particularly find Ganymede hard work, and I think a lot of it goes down to the usage of this synthetic material that we've already talked about. It's it's a, it's a, a givaudan material called Akigala wood, um, and uh, Quentin Biche, the perfumer who obviously works for givaudan or at givaudan, likes to use it a lot. It's a natural, um, very not a variant. What's the word I'm looking for? Um, and it's not extraction either. Oh gosh. It'll come to me, or one of you will tell me. But anyway, it's 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 derived from patchouli, and it's meant to be um, a kind of cleaner, maybe slightly spicier, isolate, Rachel. Yes, I, that is the word I'm looking for, but I wonder if somebody at Givadon will tell me that, strictly speaking, it's not an isolate. I, I, I don't know, because I, I suppose an isolate would be an actual component of the essential oil that you've taken out. So like, you know, 
vetiver acetate is, a, is is an isolate of vetiverol. I don't know whether, strictly speaking, Akigala wood is an isolate. We would um, we would need to to speak to somebody. Maybe um, Rodrigo Flores Rue would be happy to answer the question. But I find Akigala wood elicits a very very visceral, difficult, not altogether pleasant reaction for me. You know, right kind of solar plexus type stuff. Um, I do think it's been used well in some sense. Probably, it's probably actually its best usage is in sense where I haven't kind of smelt them and thought, oh, this is Akigala wood. But the scent where I am aware that it is in there and I don't mind is the uh, Une Amourette from uh, Etain Libre d'Orange. And I believe that one, if memory serves, was composed by Daniela Andrier. But Quentin Biche really likes his Akigala wood. Um, He's used it quite a bit as well in um, the, his two new scents for amouage, or at least certainly in purpose for amouage. Although again, there, they, they, it doesn't sort of dominate like crazy. What you mostly get in purpose is, is, is vetiver. Um, oh, there you go. Woozy says, how did you find the Akigala wooden purpose and guidance? So I've just answered your question, hopefully. Um, and so the thought of there being an Extra is interesting. I haven't smelt this yet. I'm going to, I just got the sample the other day and I'm going to spray it with you for the first time here. But I'm wondering whether actually what's going to happen is that the extra is going to be treated in the same way that the B683 extra was treated in that, in that it's not so much a heavier, bigger, louder, bolder version of the original, but somehow a smoother, more rounded, more luxurious version of the original. Okay, so let us see. I'm a bit worried about spraying this because as I say, Ganymede is one where if you leave it, if you leave a blotter that you've sprayed it with lying around, it's, it's oh, beach mode, says Pradeep. That's good, I like that, <laughs> this is beach mode. Um, Tom Ford's Fougère d'Argent has Aki Garlowood as well. Love that fragrance. Ah, interesting. Spray it clear to Oakland, USA, says Dark Star. Here we go. So this is the extra. And now I know that this room is going to smell of this for days, probably. Ganymede extra, composed by Quentin Biche. Brand new from MAB. Oh, gosh. Yeah, it's, it's, we, yeah, this is, we're off to Ganymede again. Um, he did two sprays, the madman says. Did, did you hear that? Did you hear that there was two? Um, Akigala wood is also very prominent in Essential Parfum Bois Imperial, which is also by Quentin Biche. You're absolutely right. He he does love it. He really, really loves it. Pradeep says he can smell it. Well, there you go. I thought you might be able to. And you're all the way where? I've forgotten where you are, Pradeep. But where is it? Like Bangalore or somewhere? I don't know. Um, but anyway, let's concentrate. Immortal says you're a yes, you're not wrong. But I wonder if actually my hunch was right in that this is going to be a sort of more mature, um, more luxurious, more sort of unduent, more resinous, more syrupy, more, almost more lascivious version of, of, of Ganymede, in the same way that the B683 Extra, I think, has got something just a bit more decadent about it. Maybe that's why I like it. Um, have you ever spoken to Quentin Biche about his love of Akigala Wood, says Woozy? No, I haven't actually seen Quentin for years and years and years and years. He came over for a Marc-Antoine Barrois event last year to London, but I couldn't make it up there. Um, I would love to see him. He's a, he's a fascinating person to speak to. Um, but no, no, unfortunately, I haven't been able to ask him. Perhaps I should. Maybe I should just somehow try and get a um, message to him. So what is coming across? What is coming across, actually, I think because of the Immortel, Everlasting Flower, right, is a link that I hadn't appreciated before with Etain Libre d'Orange, Afternoon of a Fawn, composed by, I believe, Ralph Schwieger. Um, is it animalic at all, speaking of lascivious, says Rachel? Um, 
Well, not in a barnyard type of way, but immortelle, I suppose, because it's kind of maybe got that curry note and maybe a hay-like note. Maybe that starts taking you into barnyard territory. So maybe by association, maybe by association. Um, but what it is, is same as the original Ganymede. It's very strange. It's very, very distinctive. It's got a suitably otherworldly sort of quality for something named Ganymede, which again, my memory is really not serving, but isn't that one of the moons of Jupiter, I seem to remember? Um, is it anything like Au Noir, says Pradeep? Okay, well, if you can kind of imagine Au Noir with about, you know, four times as much immortelle and with a quality, you know how when you get oil at the top of a liquid, and if, if it catches the light, it sort of seems to split into rainbow colours. It, it, it's, it's got that kind of a quality to it. There's something, there's, there is something unsettling. There is something unsettling about Ganymede. There's also something very, very unsettling about Encelade. Um, and, and I think that's why I rate them very highly, even though I think the Akigala wood as it's coming through is going to make me think, I don't think I can personally wear this but they are fascinating and really, really brave and quite uncompromising in a, in a very commendable sort of way. Um, I don't have a press release, but I can read you the tiny, tiny little blurb that's on the, the, in the, inside this card. It says, this world is so loaded with aromatics that it has become combustible. Its sky is gleaming with mandarin and fumaroles of incense and myrrh. It's a planet covered with warm velvet dunes where the spicy and caramelized everlasting flower is preponderant. That's a good word for you. The fiery heart of this fragrance reminds us that the gods gave Ganymede eternal life. Aha, so that is why it's a scent that lasts forever. Is it the burning skin hidden underneath the wild leather? This precious extract of perfume is as much a world perfume as a carnal one, a world perfume as a carnal one. Um, I wonder if we need to look at the French very quickly. And unfolds in its huge trail, the seduction of great classics. It is a huge trail. I wonder, somebody help me out here because, this, because there's a French on, on the left-hand side and pardon my accent, I'm trying to kind of work out what they mean by is as much a world perfume as a carnal one. So the French is parfum monde, ou parfum charnel. Ce précieux extrait déploie dans son sillage vertigineux la séduction d'un grand classique. Okay, so we get what that means. But what's the parfum monde ou parfum charnel? What do they mean in that? Do they mean, do they mean that it's sort of of the world as in, of? do they mean civilized? Do they mean, do they mean carnal, in opposition to civilize, worldly, so sophisticated. Worldly, says Rachel, yeah. Maybe that's what it means. Maybe that's what it is. Somebody, somebody who speaks French, even though, even if you're not watching the live, at some point you can help me, as long as your ears have recovered from my mangling of the language. Culture versus nature, says Zara. Yeah, that kind of thing. And then they've got some notes here. It just says everlasting flower, incense, myrrh, saffroline, and we don't really talk enough about the saffroline in Ganymede, Akigala wood and mandarin. Mark Tube says, I met Aurelien from Mathieu Premier and he said you're a lovely person. Oh, that's very nice. He's very lovely too. Thank you very much. <laughs> nice, nice compliment to get. So let's um, just have another sniff. It, I need to see how this develops. But here I'm getting that immortelle balanced in, in a more harmonious way, I think, with the Akigala wood and with the saffroline. And maybe that is what is going to make it, it doesn't hit you over the head with that massive Ganymede hammer. It hits you over the head with a slightly less massive Ganymede ladle, maybe, but without the kind of Marx Brothers comedy feel that that conjures. Um, but it, it is fascinating, it is fascinating. And I think, um, the, the brand has just become such an interesting brand, perfume-wise. Um, do you, based on first impressions, do you prefer the X Trace? Says Rachel. Uh, yes, yes, I think. Based on first impressions, because it just seems a bit more sophisticated and a bit less brash, a bit less 
trying to you know throttle you to get your attention um is it homoerotic says gavin i have no idea should it be um oh because this touches on what we said before doesn't it that that they feel that some of the Marc Antoine Barrois sense, I think this is what you're referring to, that they almost feel like these sorts of idealized versions of 80s masculine sense. Um, I didn't think that with this actually, but it, it's it's Titan erotic, whatever that means. So I don't know, it's like, it's like those, some super idealized statue of a, of a, of a Greek God. Um, Interesting, very, very, very interesting, but it will be fascinating to see how it develops on the blotter. Okay, I need to be quiet now and, and say goodbye and thank you for watching because I would like to do one more video. And again, this is going to be a genuine, do I like it or not, because I haven't smelt it before. And it's the latest from Nasomato. Okay, see you in a few minutes. Thank you very much for watching, he said while trying to click on various things. Okay, see you in a bit.